So we decided to put together a a band that had all the all the visual image, uh, all the visual strength of Alice Cooper and all the tons of groups that went on before that. We just had to combine that with the Who and smash guitars, and combine it with circus and you know fire breathe and you know sexual stuff and do strip. You know, all the strip shows that do that kind of drumming. Da, 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 boom, bow, boom, boom, blah, blah. You know, Dave Clark 5, hold the sticks the wrong way, get it, all the drummers angry. <laughs> and, and especially when somebody does a riff, everybody does it. No subtleties at all. Everybody plays the same riff in the same scale, so what you get is a buzzsaw effect of 20,000 people. And piss off everybody, including uh, win the Rolling Stone Hype of the Year Award in 1973. And then have them in 1978 beg you to put in your your ads for the four solo okay. albums, which is always nice. And the point, of course, of all of this is that people that grew up listening to the Grateful Dead in 1967 or 66 would not necessarily understand why the new kids that were born in 1963 and are now 15 years old don't give a shit about the Beatles. They care that Paul McCartney, that's his old man. It's a different generation and all the rest of that. All of which is a long-winded way of saying that uh, after 10 albums or however many we've done, I don't even know how many, we're up to the point now where we can do whatever the hell we want to. Our second comic book is coming out on the same day that our two-hour movie is coming out on NBC, January, I'm sorry, September 20th or so. On the same day that four solo albums are being released on the same day shipping five million in America only, making it the largest whatever shipment, single shipment of records in the history of this planet, as far as we know. All of which is a roundabout way of saying that we've come to the point where we can do whatever we want, and uh, there are no restrictions except those that are self-imposed. They always were self-imposed. And guess nobody told us ever what to do. It was, as a matter of fact, it was fighting upstream. Everybody was taking the makeup off, and we, we just kept it on and kept forging ahead. Genesis got rid of Peter Gabriel, and Alice took his makeup off, and Bowie became, you know, your father with a suit and tie. Whatever. And everybody lost it, and Iggy stopped doing that, and he, and he cut his hair, and he, he thought he was younger than he actually was, and all this kind of stuff. And uh, the one thing that we, we single-handedly managed to do is bring back the concept of a generation gap within the youth culture. The older the older uh, youths didn't like us, and the younger youths loved us. I will show you original uh, interviews and things that we've done, and reviews of the band, where the band was called a punk band. The Dolls were a punk band. I don't know how ever we became a punk band, but I guess it was just a movement or something. And Glitter too, and Glam. So it came to the point where uh, I'd never wind up playing anything that didn't have something to do with the kick of the bass drum live or on record. So bass patterns were based around if you've got a, a beat structure that involves you wouldn't go because it's too com you know if a drum is on doing 4-4 four, four, you can't go because you're dealing with all times. Don't fool the kids. You know, they want something they can let me lean against that bass and against the drums and then take me away. And when the hit, when the riff comes up, just slash it to me. You know, everybody do the same riff. And that was the concept behind the band. But again, anytime anybody thought that they had the band pegged, we came out with Beth or Hard Luck Woman, or even things like Christine 16, different kinds of things, but not too many. It was always just one every other album, just to show people that we could do whatever we want. And now that uh, we've released our upteenth collection of songs, or whatever, uh, double platinum that the record company wanted to bring out instead of k -Tel, we've come to the point of doing four Kiss albums at the same time. We don't really look at them as solo albums so much, because uh, solo albums are departures from the band. I'm not putting out a country and western album. This is a Kiss album. It's got the sensibilities, song structure-wise, of a Kiss song. Mm -hmm. I may be doing uh, Mr. Make Believer, Man of a Thousand Faces, but uh, classic song structure, ABA, 
song structure is, is the kiss song. You start out with an intro, go right into the first verse. If there's a bridge, bridge, and then right chorus. And then second verse, chorus, solo, chorus, and out. And to write within that framework and get a song in three minutes or under, it's the hardest thing in the world. The easiest thing to do in the world is start out someplace by strumming a guitar and you've got a whole side to develop something and it doesn't, you know, I mean, the hardest thing is to cut off all the meat and leave the, you know, just, I'm so sorry, cut off all the fat and just leave the meat. Right. <clears throat> Any songwriter will tell you the hardest thing to do is to write a memorable, simple song. Mm -hmm. The hardest thing in the world. And, uh, you know, there are people that are hired by music song publishing companies and they're just buildings filled with these people that sit there and they try to th think melodies that people will remember. When uh, Kiss would be doing, when we'd be doing my tunes on the album, the way we'd figure out how to do it is we'd record the drums with a scratch guitar of me, and I'd be talking through the headset to Peter, our drummer, saying, all right, now here comes the, the bridge, one, two, three, switch to 16, you know, and then uh, one, two, three, here comes the four, four, four. And that's the way we, we would do songs. Once we had the drums down, then everybody would come in with their guitars and just bash away with obvious separation. In case yeah. if you make a mistake, but if you're feeling good, you just punch in your part. Mm. Yeah. Aesthetically, it's not my instrument. Bass has more to do with what I'm all about. Mm. It's, bum, you know, I mean, whatever the note is, you understand it and it's there and that's the note. I think there is something to do with the personality and your, and your outlook and the way things that, that attract certain people to certain instruments. Mm -hmm. Every drummer that I've ever played with has been exactly the same. Crazy, loony, out of his bird. And uh, very stubborn, very obstinate, very, I mean, that's just the way it is. Boom, 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 boom. So, um, on this album, I did the same thing. We cut all the, all the basics with me playing guitar, scratch, with Alan Schwartzberg playing the drums on all the track, and then overdubbing my Good guitar, you know, good guitars, starting with acoustics, overlaying electrics, depending on the the songs. The bass player on the entire album is a guy whose name is Nils Jason, who at this point is not famous, but who will be very soon. That could be fun. The first place that I got was a bass called a Segova, which was a Jap bass. It was a copy of a Hofner with a microphone pickup. If the microphone, you know, I'd, you can talk into it and say hello, and it would come out of your amp. You know those, right? Oh, I mean, I'd play with a pick all the time. I could never play with my hands. Or any time I tried to play with my fingers, I noticed that you really couldn't understand what the note was. It was a rounder, deeper note. And if everybody's and guitar players, of course, need only half the wattage that you need to be able on the same level. In other words, if you've got a hundred watt amp, I need two hundred watts to be in the same league because mm -hmm. the lower the frequency, the du double the wattage power, right? Because it sounds lower and all that stuff. So, if you, if you didn't play treble, goodbye. And so as soon as I saw Cream, I said, that's it. See, that guy plays with a pick. <laughs> I can play with a pick, too. And it makes a lot of sense. The bigger the hall, the less you're going to be heard if you're using Fender Precisions out of an acoustic bass cabinet. You are just lost. You're, you're killing yourself. The best amp for a basement to use live is to use those folded horn enclosures if you like the really uh, deep bass, but still to get the edge you need a direct line going into the sound system so that you can be heard, so that the man out front can add highs and mids because the lows are just not going to carry when you've got a 50 foot ceiling. There's nothing for the bass to hold on to, you're just going to get these kind of wandering waves of bass frequencies. Wait. The, well, then the first bass. Okay, so before the band was formed, rain, around rainbow time, I walked into a guy whose name was Charlie LeBeau, who worked in a... Uh, he had a company that was just starting there called Guitar Lab. And I saw this thing hanging on the wall, and I said, how much is that? He said, oh, that's not working. I said, no, no, how much is that? It's only got one pickup, it's only got one dial. You can either turn it up or down. I love it. And the neck was totally exposed. How much is that bass? What do you mean exposed? Well, the neck... You know the way how fender necks come into the body so that the last, so that the top four or five notes on the neck are actually in the body. Oh, right. <clears throat> well, this neck is totally exposed so that you've got a twin horn thing and where they meet, you can simply go to the top, top of the neck and that's your highest note. 
So it was a two octave plus two note mm. neck. Very light body, thin, so it was perfect for my purposes because I was going to jump around. So the first bass was a $200 Charlie LeBeau creation that he didn't even want to give to anybody because it was too simple. You know, all bass players like, hey, let's put it out of face so that nobody will understand what I'm doing live. 